Ulrich Wille, who took command of the Swiss army in August 1914, was not popular among his French-speaking compatriots. He quickly implemented his defence strategy, deploying troops in the regions closest to the fighting, in the Jura near the German-French front, and in Graubünden close to the Italian-Austrian front. But this wasn't the problem. Wille caused a scandal in French-speaking Switzerland by proposing to the cabinet in 1915 to enter the war on the side of the central powers, Germany, Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire and Bulgaria. In March 1916, the editor of the Gazette de Lausanne and several French-speaking parliamentarians demanded that command of the country be taken out of the hands of the chief of staff and given to the cabinet instead. The government relented a little and agreed to reduce the army's powers. This accord was known as the Bern Peace Agreement. Two further events jeopardized Swiss neutrality and caused further tensions between Western and Northern Switzerland. In 1916, two Swiss colonels shared intelligence information with German and Austro-Hungarian military attaches. Ville condemned the two colonels to 20 days detention, an unsatisfactory sentence in the eyes of the pro-Allied party, who considered the officers to be traitors. Then in June 1917, the Swiss Foreign Minister Arthur Hoffmann supported a plan to negotiate peace between Russia and Germany. At the time, German troops were fighting the Romanians and Russians on the Eastern Front and their Allied forces in the West. The Allies wanted to weaken the Germans by keeping their troops busy on both sides. The French speakers were furious at Hoffmann's intervention and wanted to distance themselves from the German speakers, carving out a new identity. The Western Swiss press dropped the expression Swiss-French and used instead the term Swiss Romande from Western Switzerland. The Neue Zurcher Zeitung accused the Gazette de Lausanne and its editor, Edouard Secretan, of pitching the French speakers against the German speakers. A huge rift had emerged between the two communities, now known as the Röstigraben, literally fried potato ditch, even though both sides were trying to calm things down. If you take a closer look at the most influential Western Swiss newspapers of the era, the Gazette de Lausanne and the Journal de Genève, in August 1914 the most dominant expression was Swiss French. A year later, in September 1915, the term Swiss Romande was more widely used than Swiss French. But even today, many French don't really know what it means. <laughs>